Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I am here today with a bit of a discussion video and this is going to be on books, bookshelf organization, keeping books, not keeping books, those kinds of things uh, because this weekend I am doing some bookshelf reorganization um, and uh, my bookshelves don't exclusively include books um, so there's only so many shelves that are going to have books um, so I'm trying to figure out what rationale to use and I've come up with some ideas but I'm curious as to what you like what makes you keep books um, do you keep other things on your bookshelves you know what's the what 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 are the questions that help you answer do I keep this or not? How many books should I have? Should. Should's not a good one. Um, and those kinds of things. Um, I've seen a couple of videos uh, recently of people talking about this. I really enjoyed the video by Jen from Remembered Meads, Reads. Hi, Jen! Uh, she did a great one on this because, and it was more specifically about keeping books as physical objects. And I, for me, I realize I'm not as, um, I'm not, m as much of a collector, um, I think, than most people are. I realized this with when I went through, I went through the same thing with film, um, when I was really into film, and at some point I realized, oh, I'm not a collector. I wanna watch movies, but I don't necessarily want to keep all the movies or have all the movies. And I feel like I'm hitting that same point with books. It's funny, it's also a couple of years into the journey of books, and then this also might be a couple of years into amassing a lot of books. Um, and I'm not too worried about about like having too many too little that kind of things but I realized my rationale for what I keep and what I don't keep is different than I thought it used to be so just so just for some context uh, the, for me it's weird this weekend I have two goals one of which will be to there are seven plus five particular books that I am looking for. Um, well, there's one series that I would like to reread, and then there's seven books that I would like to read for different projects, and I don't know where they are. They're all wrapped up. So I'm going to be pulling out all of my wrapped books that are part of my Shannon Reads Those Books exploration, um, that are Canadian books. Um, there's uh, all the Place Poetry and Collection, because I think I would like to work through those because they're faster reads. And also all of the books that catch all fiction that's not genre fiction, so anything literary, historical, um, a classic that's not part of a project. Those are all the books I'm going to be pulling out, and it's about half of my unread books. Or, uh, yeah, and half of my wrapped books. So I don't know how I'm going to find these seven particular titles that I'm looking for. That I think they're all paperbacks. So I don't know. That's so that's one goal for this weekend. And then the other goal for this weekend is I would like to reorganize my bookshelves. I have three bookshelves like this. They're really large, dark wood-ish. <laughs> Um, and they're five shelves. Um, so I have three like this and but one is is not going to be any books at all. It's going to be movies and TV shows and art supplies. So and then then in the for the remaining two, I think I want four shelves for my journals and my photos because my photos are just dumped in this this basket. And I'm like that is not a great way to store them. Like it's just it's how they ended up being stored when I got them from storage and I never did anything with them. I'm like, those are memories. Those are irreplaceable. They should have their own shelf. So I am going to give one of the shelves to my photos and then I want to leave three for um, journals and sketchbooks because again, those are things that I created. Those are things, I didn't create the photos technically, um, but there are things that are individual, unique memories to me. So I want to keep them. It's more, imp it actually is more important to me to keep unique to me things, as long as they're meaningful. If it's something I didn't like, that's that's another story. But if it's my journal, like that's more meaningful to me than keeping a paperback novel that I've already read that's widely available. So I, I'm coming to some decisions and it's one of those things that it's like once you start a project, things will shift. Like, you know, I'll come across challenges that I didn't think of. And honestly, so if you've been doing the math, that leaves me six shelves like this for books. <laughs> six shelves. That's it. Now, there are a couple of, I do have a couple other 
smaller bookshelves that I can use one of which uses is I have a th small three bookshelf for my nightstand and one of those shelves is my currently reading because it goes that's where I read so that's one place that has books and then I do have a small two shelf bookshelf that will probably end up being a fair amount of nonfiction um, it'll probably be my nonfiction and my knitting because I would like a home for my knitting because that's the other thing a lot of my bookshelves a lot of that space I use for other things. Like I have, I'm gonna have three whole shelves for art supplies, and that's important to me. Actually, five whole shelves for art supplies because I have another two shelf bookshelf. Anyway, I'm getting into all this weird math with the shelves, but generally, what I'm saying is that I've come to realize that a lot of my space, a lot of my storage space, I actually want for things other than books. So if the amount of space I have for books decreases. I won't be able to put out as many books as as I normally do or as I think I do and I'm not I think I'm okay with that but I think I need to get firm on what those shelves are so what I think is going to go on those shelves is I'm definitely going to keep this shelf or a shelf like this that is mostly open and that's going to be a home for books that I finished this year this is extremely important to me that when I've finished a book there is somewhere for it to go because otherwise it's almost a deterrent right because you finish a book and then you have nowhere to put it that doesn't work for me maybe you put your read and unread shelves together like unread books together and so you just put it back where it was but for me I don't have somewhere for it to go so this is where it's gonna go so whether it's this shelf or that shelf or that shelf doesn't matter I just need one empty ish shelf for books that I finish this year and then usually twice a year I clear it out um, and, and empty it again so I have a home for it I'm also going to include um, sketchbooks and journals that I finished on the shelf as well because again I want a place to put them when they're done and I don't want to have any deterrent to not finish journals or sketchbooks because that's an important part of my life um, you know as well so I'm gonna see how that works so putting them together and see if it encourages me to finish more sketchbooks and journals as well so we shall see how that goes so I'm definitely gonna keep one shelf for that I think I'm gonna keep one shelf for series um, and we'll see how that goes it's probably not enough um, and it might also be series and Shakespeare because I realized that I do like to have Shakespeare and I like to have it out and it's one of the few things that I would like to finish there's only two things that I don't have that I want to have as a sort of collection one of which is um, Shakespeare <clears throat> I would like to have all the plays individually I have 10 of the 38 I do have this complete works so I, I don't need them but that is a very unwieldy way to read them so if I'm going to collect anything I think that would be it but of course right now I'm not shopping we're not shopping because it's COVID-19 and we're, we're in the middle of the pandemic so not doing that but later it would be a sort of fun thing to do and the only other collection most of which are holding up this uh, my phone right now but the only other books that I would like to finish off the collection is the series of unfortunate events which I buddy read with Izzy um, last year to the and the year before I think it was uh, we finished it last year I think anyway so I have book 7 8 9 and uh, 11, 12, 13. So I have most of the back half of the series, but I don't have the front half of the series. And for some reason, I don't have the slippery slope. I think it, there was a shipping, there was not enough time during holiday shipping or something to get it. So some of these I read um, physically, some of them I read from the library, some of them I read digitally, but it is a series I would like. And I don't mind getting different, this is my favorite. Actually, this is one of be my all time favorite covers ever. This is the Hostile Hospital and it's kind of funny right now because masks. Um, but yeah, but I didn't want to try the new, they have some different editions for the first three ones that are like, I think sort of larger paperbacks. Anyway, so those are the only two things that I would actually like to collect that I'm actually actively would consider collecting. Um, I'm not too much of a collector. Um, I, I'm happy to let things go after I read them um, if, there, if there isn't any particular uh, meaning for them. So yeah, so my six bookshelves, I think I'm dedicating to one unread, one for series, one for fiction, that's read one for nonfiction that's read and then maybe two unread shelves at least one book of one shelf of unread books potentially two I don't think that that's going to be enough space I think I am totally kidding myself that I will be able to manage with six shelves but that is the current goal so we'll see what happens with that um, and as I already mentioned there's a lot of non-book things that I keep on my bookshelves journals sketchbooks art supplies my knitting nonfiction books like 
um, cooking cookbooks, um, also film and um, TV series. I have two shelves. I also have shelves for working documents, like a lot of the notebooks that I use on a daily or dailyish ba basis. Stationery supplies. Lots of stationary supplies. Half of that is sort of in art supplies, but I still need stationary supplies, pens, pencils, index cards, those kinds of things. I use those all the time. And as well as my photos. So it's a fair amount of things that are going to be on my bookshelves that are not books. So it's a lot of space. So I'm, but I'm curious now that we're well into this video, I'm curious as to what rationale people use in terms of keeping their books. Um, for me, I'm, I'm, I have a sense of what it would be, but I'm not totally sure if it's in reality when I'm sitting there looking at the books if that's how I'm going to feel about it. Um, I heard a really great rationale from my aunt who um, was a librarian for many many years. She's now retired but she was a librarian and she says the things that they would consider in the libraries, they would consider three things. One of which is condition condition of the book, the content of the book, is it still relevant, and is anyone using it? And I think that's an interesting uh, framework to, or decision matrix in terms of keeping books. Condition, I think, is important. If it's something that's not readable and your purpose is to read it, then it doesn't make sense to keep it unless it's purely for nostalgic or meaning, like like emotional, like uh, you have some attachment to it. For me, I do consider condition in terms of if, if um, the mostly I consider it if it's dusty. Um, I'm allergic to dust, so if a book is too dusty, I can't actually read it. So I don't think... I might have one or two that have a, a nostalgic memory meaning that are, are that I've kept them for that might be dusty and I'm currently reading Odd Thomas I, have it right here. I am currently reading Odd Thomas and this 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 one is a bit dusty but it's not so much that it bothers me um, but if a book is too dusty it's got to go that's for condition that's pretty much the only rationale I have. I don't really. I, I actually find great comfort in reading well-worn paperbacks because it means I feel like I don't need to be precious about it. I can just read them. I can fall asleep with them like on my face. Like it doesn't matter. So condition is, is something I can actually I'm a little more happy to read books that are in a little worn condition because then I don't have to worry about them. If I have to be very precious with it, then it's a bit of a, just a slight barrier to reading, um, and uh, which isn't a great thing, but it just means I have to read it in a particular context. Um, and then in terms of the content, I think that's a great question. Is this, does this book have something in it that you want? Do, did you enjoy the story? Are you looking forward to the story? Like the content makes sense. And then also for nonfiction, for me, I think I probably am going to end up keeping a fair amount more nonfiction, even though a lot of people say to get rid of things like textbooks or cooks, cookbooks, just find the information online. Not for me. If it is a book that I have used again and again and again, then it's my go-to for that information. Also, I find recipe sites, my computer does not like them. It like freezes a lot because there's so many ads and pop-ups and, and action-y things. And I'm like, I just want the recipe. I don't like always want to see all of the other things and all of the offers and sign my mailing list and it's just like wow I just like how, how do you do the thing so I have I'm I'm totally fine having my uh, I have a few recipe books that I use and that's fine um and I do also keep I probably will keep a bunch of my um uh, like knitting books again like I find if I have the pattern in a book and I understand the pattern from that book, I would much rather keep the book than try and find it later online. It's a personal preference things. I'm sure there's other information. Like for me, history information, I'm much rather likely to go to Wikipedia than have a book for it. So, but it's something that I'm less likely to use rather than cooking or knitting, which I do way more often. So yeah, so I think the content really, really does matter. Um, and then is anyone using it? I think is an interesting question um, because like for, uh, comparative from a library to a personal perspective, um, you know, uh, a library, I'm sure you can look up, see how often the book is checked out. And that is makes a, a quick yes or no <laughs> on, a, on a book. And then but I think in terms of if the book is read versus unread, there's something interesting there, too. Like if it's an unread book and you haven't read it for years, is there a reason you're not picking it up off the shelf? You know, like is or or yeah, or yeah, or did you keep it as a reference, but you haven't used it for five years? You know, I think it's a really good parameter to to think about. Um, so that's one of the criterias for myself. I think I have a different criteria for read books versus unread books. Um, unread books, I sort of like if I'm interested in reading it and I have space for it, I will keep it. 
you know, there's there, that's about it. Like if I don't have space for it, like a lot of my books, I keep, I have a little storage spot behind this wall um, that has my extra or excess books, um, uh, DVDs and uh, kn knitting, <laughs> like yarn. So, and I do routinely, and that's what I'm gonna do this weekend, I do routinely do a bit of a switcheroo um, to refresh things, to find some new yarn for new projects. So I have to pick the projects before the yarn, I gotta do that. Um, and then if there's a TV series that I wanna watch um, that isn't on Netflix or anything, I always keep one or two out, um, and then I keep my favorites out too as well. And so for books too, I have a lot that are read there that I don't quite know what to do with because as I said, only gonna have six shelves um for books but then unread ones I kind of like if I have enough space for them I'm not I'm not too worried about them so my unread books I have it's just am I interested in the book or not that's it but for read books I do feel like um it is something that has to be meaningful to me um or useful so meaningful is usually the fiction books and then useful is usually the non-fiction books although sometimes it's, there's some crossover um and there are a couple of series that i have that i plan on keeping you know harry potter twilight series of unfortunate events um and uh oh there's another one but the author's a bit controversial and i don't know what to do about it and that's the uh, ender's game series i have the first four books which are very meaningful to me to read but the author is has said some horrible things and I, I feel at a loss at what to do. So those four are just in storage and I, I just continue to feel uh, at a loss because when I read them, none of none of that was out there. It was before Twitter and all that stuff. It's before you would actually have any kind of, you know, access to an author in that way. So yeah, so I don't know what to do about those. But if they're, if the books are meaningful to me, if there is a memory for them, if, um, if it was a gift, often I'll keep a book. If it was a gift, if I know the author personally, I will definitely keep the book. Um, and if it has a powerful memory, um, or will I reference it? Is this something that I will go to? Will I need to look up that stitch? Or is it something that's highly quotable? Um, you know, those kinds of things. And the meaningful ones, like they're sort of like nostalgic kids books that I have that I will always keep. But then there's some that I read for a project or I read at a particular time in my life or read and it, it found, for me, I found new love for a whole genre. So I'm going to keep that book because it reminds me of those moments and it's meaningful to me in those ways. Another criteria, and I think with this sort of is similar to the meaningful one, but it's beautiful. And I, I got this quote, I asked my sister Jamie, I'm like, what's that quote? Because I think this quote says something really, really wonderful about keeping, keeping things. And it's um, from William Morris, and it is, have nothing in your house that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. And I think there really, really is something in there. And I think for me, if you just substitute out beautiful for meaningful, um, although I think there is beauty and meaning, so they do go hand in hand. So I think for my keeping my red books, um, I think that's really sort of something that I'm going to keep close to my heart when I'm making those decisions. Is this something that is beautiful? And is this something that is meaningful? Um, sorry, beautiful and useful. And I, because, and nonfiction definitely is useful. But again, will you use it in that form or would you prefer to get it online? I think it's a good differentiation into how to do it. So those are some of the things that I am thinking about. I have no idea how this project is going to go down. I might come back and do another video afterwards and be like, wow, I was so wrong or I don't know, or it totally worked out. Anyway, but I'm curious, how do you, about other people and their bookshelf organization and rationale for keeping books? Like, and even do you keep all of your books out? Like for me, I keep a fair like more than half probably two-thirds of my books I keep stored away and I rotate them out um, and also how do you sort your books I know a lot of people do them into read and unread books that's something I didn't used to do that's something I learned from booktube and I think there is a lot of value in that not always with nonfiction, like because not all nonfiction I read start to finish like knitting books I, I tend to need to know that pattern or whatever so they'll put all knitting together but do you keep your read and unread together um and what's your rationale for keeping something versus getting rid of something do you have a rationale do you go based on feeling do you marry condo it do do you like um well, yeah like is it you know yeah and do you want to keep all your books like for me I feel like I am happy to let go of a lot of sort of like popular fiction after I've read it. Um, but there's a lot of other books that has some 
some, you know, I, actually, I don't think I know. Until I've read a book, I don't know whether I would keep it. Um, but I'm curious, do you want to keep all the books that you have? For me, I'm, I'm happy to let a lot go. Not right now, because there's nothing, because it's COVID. Um, but I'll, you know, if I'm going to donate something, I'll just put it to the side until that becomes something that we can do again. Um, and also, are you happy with how your bookshelf organization is? is or is there things that you would want to change? What would you change? Do you have an ideal for your collection or bookshelves? Or do you consider it a collection? Or do you consider it like a working library? a personal library or like because I don't I don't necessarily think of it as a collection like I think like series feel like like mini collections but it is your own personal collection your own personal library and it says something about you and I think there's something interesting about that and um you know and now we're in a space where we can often share those things but you know, sometimes you do you don't, only the people that would be in your house would know, but now we can show a picture and be like, yeah, this is my collection, this is what it looks like, this represents who I am um, in terms of the books that you read, and then maybe who you want to be in terms of your unread books, or who you will be in the future after you read them, I don't know. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on collecting and organizing, and let me know, does anyone else keep things other than books on their bookshelves? Because for me, I realize it's less than if even six out of 15, that is less than half of my shelves are actually books. And that's really helpful to remember um, in terms of why I'm not getting everything on the shelves. <laughs> anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts. And uh, yeah, let's talk again soon. Thanks for watching.